It's unlikely, but it would be great if this at least encouraged, if we don't see it in this country, maybe a state AG, I don't know, could bring charges against uh, these members of the CIA or the people who are involved in this torture. Apparently, this um, James Mitchell was my understanding I think I've heard it reported now, is that he was actually there for some of the early torture sessions. This is one of the two doctors. We're going to talk more about this in the uh, the fun half. <laughs> but apparently, early on, these two contractors, guys who were semi-retired at that time, who had run the Air Force, I guess it's called the SEER program, which is basically to train, in this case, Air Force personnel, how to deal with torture if they get caught behind enemy lines, if they become a prisoner, how to deal with being tortured by these oppressive dictatorial regimes, right? These bad, bad, bad regimes that have no humanity and would torture their prisoners. So their job was to teach people how to withstand that torture and maintain their sanity. So these guys basically, more or less, we don't know exactly how it happens, but I'm, I'm going by his own statements in this uh, Vice interview, offered up their services on not how to teach people how to withstand torture, but how to teach people to torture so that the subject of the torture could not withstand it. Aside from the fact that you've got these sadists, and Mitchell, and I think this is important to understand here, he sort of wrapped up in this is the fact that he had a good friend who was killed by an Islamic extremist group right around this time. Or a year or two prior, I guess. And so here's a guy who I think, I mean, this is just, this is just a real, this is a psychological problem manifesting itself and imposing itself, frankly, on, on the uh, country. Guy earned $81 million with his buddy out of a $180 million contract. So we've got this James Mitchell and Bruce Jensen, who are these two contractors, and they become, the, you know, this is one of those sort of classic cases, like, I thought I was semi-retired, and I was just really upset about 9-11, so I called and said, we should be, we should be beating the hell out of these people individually, uh, in the same way that I used to teach people not to get beat out, uh, you know, to survive the torture that they were subjected to. And he gets rolled in there, and it's they throw mountains of money at this guy. And, I mean, con contemplate this for a moment. It is almost like they had to pay these two guys so much money to make it seem like it was a real program. I mean... You know, you, you, you come across this in business where, you know, and for those of us who are not very good at business, we always enter into the, the, the equation when you're talking about business like, oh, I, my goal is to save this uh, company that I'm going to do consulting for or whatever it is uh, or provide a product for. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them, I'm going to try and cut down the price it's going to cost them as much as possible. And they're going to appreciate that. But that's not the way it works. <laughs> the way it works in these big uh, bureaucracies, whether they are government-run or business-run, is that actually you need to have a bigger expenditure so that you can sell it up the corporate ladder to explain its value. And the easiest way to explain that value is by the fact that it costs this much. Because if this guy had been paid, hey, you know, you're semi-retired, you're just coming in, uh, we're going to give you twice what you were making in the Air Force. 
And I don't know how much that is he was making in the Air Force, but we're going to give you mm, $200,000 a year each to consult us on how to run this program of torturing these people. Then it would just look like what it was, which was a bunch of psychopaths. This guy off the street who doesn't know anything about interrogating people, all he knows is how to withstand torture. He doesn't know about interrogation. He doesn't know the principle that you get better interrogation or better information from not torturing people. He, he, he's, he seems to be, according to this Vice uh, piece, obsessed with uh, reading about the Quran, but he's not an academic when it comes to studying Islam or extremists or terrorists. None of this. He doesn't have experience in any of this. What he knows is how to teach people to withstand extreme torture. That's all he knows. And they sign him up ostensibly to get actionable information. 